Hello, welcome everyone to the analytical figure drawing class um, that's offered through the CGMW. Uh, my name is Michael Hampton and I will be the instructor for this class. Um, and we'll be together for the next eight weeks uh, going over the figure, um, like the course title. Uh, and it'll be an analytical survey of the figure, taking into account process, uh, the larger masses and perspectives, um, all the while trying to take the actual and make it more didactic and practical. Um, so very uh, hopefully clear process that will be gauged or based on giving you an approach to the figure that can be invention um, heavy and or a great first pass through understanding the surface forms. Um, this is the website that I keep uh, it's a kind of a supplement to the book that I've written on figure drawing process. It's called Figure Drawing Design and Invention. And it's really the um, primary way that I'm engaging in this industry. Uh, so I'm a little bit different from some of your other instructors. I'm not uh, working in an industry studio. I'm much uh, more interested in education. So I'll be doing, or I do quite a bit more um, teaching, lecturing, um, stuff like that. So my engagement with this industry is primarily through um, education. And as such, I have this website set up to facilitate learning um, and help with what I have written and put into the book. Um, I also hope it'll be useful for you um, as students in this course. It has in each one of these links just um, a number of examples, different drawings that will go with certain chapters in the book. And as I don't think that you'll have to buy the a book um, because you'll have the, the lectures, uh, hopefully these will just be supplemental. I also have a blog here that I do try to keep um, a lot of links on for homework and or resources. And then I just try to dump drawings here all the time. Um, and the reason for that is I think it's a really great and interesting way to make sure that the book is kind of a very organic, continually evolving thing so that the chapters that are written and printed um, can continue to evolve in the sense by people being able to uh, come back and check this and see new examples or images and hopefully understand the material all the better for it. Uh, so that's my main kind of interest and concern. Uh, so this is the website. Um, I've also developed one that's just specific for your, this class. So uh, for the analytical figure drawing class, I wanted something to be more personal, um, to be a little bit more private, uh, because you have paid for a class. I want to make sure that you get everything possible from it um, that you've kind of anticipated going in. So in this blog, it will be kind of more invitation only. It will only be um, you as students or your fellow students in this course. Um, and as such, I hope that you treat it as a community or as a place where you can post your work um, or critique each other or comment on one another's work. Um, just a place to build a community. Um, another place, I know that the CGMW uh, websites will also offer that as an opportunity. This is just one more. I want to make sure that um, I can make my lecture material and teaching as transparent as possible and that you feel like you have um, every possible avenue or opportunity to kind of get in touch with me or have some type of um, interaction. So what you'll find here is that there's also links and I'll grow this list as we move on. The links are um, now there for homework and reference. So Pose Maniacs and Character Designs are two good websites that have a lot of uh, reference imagery for figures. Um, what I've also put up as I'm doing this kind of intro after the fact is some of the week one lecture materials. Um, you all have the video, but I'm also going to try every week to post still imagery of the works or drawings in progress so that you can see and have an opportunity to kind of be a little bit more meditative on some of the imagery after you've watched the videos, if you need it. So um, maybe printing these out and having them with you when you do homework, or just referencing the drawings as you do your homework may be more convenient 
uh, than having to turn the video on again or watch the video again. So I'll do this every week and at the bottom the only other post so far is just a welcome which is essentially all of the same things that I'm saying to you now. So again, please feel free to use this as a place to interact, um, have discussion, ask questions, you know, most importantly. Uh, if you feel that I'm not giving you the resources that you need or that I could be doing something different or better, please feel free to let me know. I'm here to make sure that you um, really do see some improvements and changes in your figure drawings that I hope will be um, well worth the time that you spent here. Um, to that point, what I also will put up that I only have now here as a document is your course outline. Right, so I'm going to put this somewhere up on the blog so that you can always reference it and come back to it. If you do have the book, Design and Invention, it following the chapters, pretty much chapter for chapter, um, except because this is an analytical figure drawing sense and it's more of a general class in its overview, we'll really be doing only the larger forms. So um, it's process intensive and uh, form intensive in its analytic uh, survey. So it's not going to be going into hands and feet, um, but only major masses. Um, and uh, what I've planned is week one, gesture, week two is connections, week three, head drawing, four and five are the torso. Uh, those lectures are a little bit more intensive and the skill level kind of jumps up a little bit at that point uh, or the technical requirements for kind of doing the, the homework or understanding the material. So I space it out. Six is the legs and then seven and eight kind of broken into those two for the arm. Um, that being said, I'm more than happy to look at your hand and foot drawings if you would like some feedback at any point. Um, but it is for time considerations and energy considerations of students and teacher uh, too much in an eight week quarter or period of time to cram all that stuff together. There's not enough time for, for me in the lecture development. Um, and this is a course that I usually teach at private schools or colleges in anywhere from 11 weeks to 14 weeks. So to condense any of this information then down into eight is already a lot of information. So um, you can see that also every week I've put up homework that I would recommend that you do. Um, of course you don't have to and if you don't that's fine. I'm not going to fail you. You can't get kicked out so you shouldn't worry about it. Uh, but it will allow you to see a lot more improvement much more quickly. And this is all here for you to read. I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, what I'm asking you to do is for every assignment to choose five, three, four of your best every week and submit to me for the video feedback. Right? So I can give you some interaction on the drawing and correction. Um, it could be your five best or it could be your five worst. It might be more productive if it's your worst because that way I can really help you on the stuff that you think you're having the greatest problem with or difficulty with. Um, so homework is 25 construction, 25 head drawing. The only week that has a larger sum or amount of homework is the first one because it's just repetition. Um, and if you think about gesture drawings, each one is done in a minute. That homework assignment is like upwards of a couple hours maybe or less than that. So um, really not that big of an assignment and it's just that it sounds like a lot. So that's it. That's the overview of the course and some of the resources that I've set up to kind of help you in the kind of progression through it. Um, this is going to be the gesture week, uh, as you can kind of see from some of the lectures uh, that I've posted up online. Um, so again, thank you for joining me uh, in this course. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited to kind of interact with all of you uh, in this uh, kind of interesting and new forum. So without a further ado, let's um, go ahead and get into the materials. Uh, very last thing is, you know, please feel free to contact me at any time through email. Um, I'm absolutely happy to uh, talk with all of you and I'm very much looking forward to it. I try to position my teachings in a way that is between um, the knowledge-driven or the anatom anatomical and the 
practical. Right? So to me, the practical is maybe even a little bit more important uh, because there are all these incredibly difficult existing concepts about um, anatomy, but maybe in a sense it's even more difficult to understand how to integrate them and use them. So this is going to be our um, model figure or diagram just so we can you know, flesh out some ideas and then the goal will be that later in the course these kind of come to life with a little bit more um, design and, and development. Uh, for the books, reference books, uh, what I would recommend, even though I'll be showing you know, a, a good amount of pictures, is that you uh, do have a book. Uh, I would never require that any of you buy the one that I wrote, um, although it would be good. It would go w with the course well. Uh, but that being said, if you do take stellar notes during the class, um, you shouldn't need it. Another consideration would be to get an anatomy book. Uh, this is something that you're definitely going to need. Uh, and one of the ones that I prefer is the Elliot Goldfinger Human Anatomy for the Artist. Um, it's just something that I have enjoyed. Uh, I think it's a good book. It's uh, pretty comprehensive in that it goes through uh, muscle, shape, photographic view, you know, diagrammatic, illustrative view. Uh, it seems to cover all of the uh, qualities and views, um, even though the text is a little dry. Um, and as we get closer or near to that date, um, I'm going to recommend a few more. Okay, So um, I'll even make it a list or a book list available um, on your class blog, which again, you should all be getting um, an email from me in the first week. Okay, so I feel a little guilty spending too much time talking about setting stuff up and not getting to the uh, subject matter at hand. And let's start that. So I can do a lot of these kind of house cleaning duties in um, how I present the blog and that's really actually the main reason for it is to allow us as much time here to talk. Um, so again, today will be gesture. Uh, it's our theme and really important concept for today. Um, and it is a concept. Right? Let's make sure that we keep that in mind. Uh, drawing the figure, especially in the context of this class, uh, does deal pretty heavily with abstraction, which may sound weird and slightly disturbing. Um, but I think that this is kind of the bread and butter of most arts, which just means to withdraw, to um, reduce from an object, a specific object, some type of essence. Uh, doesn't not in any way meant there to be a spiritual essence. Um, but something that is thematic to it as a, as a form or as a subject or as an idea. Um, so that's a lot of what gesture is. It's going to be very different from what we'll put on this side, which is the contour. So if this is something that you're familiar with, it's not bad. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not, um, not value-based as far as a judgment of right or wrong, but it's different. It's different than how I'll be teaching or I'll be going through the work and study of the figure. This is something that's more directly built and made for observation. Um, what we're going to be doing is looking more at invention. Uh, I want you to understand the figure and the figure mechanics so that you'll have the ability to invent. The differences here that I see uh, would be that this is something that ultimately would allow for uh, a much easier transition into character concept design, something that requires more of a mechanical understanding of uh, the structure. Um, differences in their process. This is something that's almost exclusively working from the outside to the inside. Uh, we start with the outside of the contour lines, and then we, after encapsulating the figure in a single line, start to shade inside. Um, the invention is something that's more inside out. So uh, when we study or you do your homework this week, um, the assignment is all laid out with a number on the uh, course outline that again will be available to you. Uh, and that will be really about trying to get in these lines to the insides of the form. So if you find that your lines are kind of starting to meander and wander towards that outside point again, make sure you really do force the idea of bringing them back in. 
Okay, so we have a couple things here. Uh, one, we're just defining what it is that we're drawing by what we know not to do. And we're setting up a new concept for the development of the figure based on abstraction. So first of all, we have to determine what it is about the figure that can be easily abstracted into a type of essence. Okay, so uh, a type of edited concept of its essentials. Uh, and the way I do that is just by uh, looking at a few of the things that are very specific to the figure. Um, and in gesture, what I want to do is create a list so that I know what to, is the most important things um, for the figure. And I think that will lead us here, at least um, intellectually, a lot more easily. Um, the first thing that's really important in gesture is the concept of a story. Um, and not like you have to have a great kind of opus or completed narrative in any sense, but um, story I'll take to mean here as what's interesting about it. So if anything, uh, I'm kind of of the opinion that if we don't have an interesting position or something interesting to say with the figure, uh, that it may be better just to not draw it. Um, but it could be anything. It doesn't have to be grand. Although you're industry does seem to like exaggeration. Um, and maybe that's because it makes the mood, posture, position, or expression of the figure much larger and easily recognizable. So exaggeration of any quality. Um, you could just fill in the blank here with a descriptive term, angry, excited. Uh, it could also be something more subtle. Uh, there's something to be said for the subtle positionings of the figure um, to study the kind of the beauty that exists in the counter positioning of weight between pelvis and shoulder line, um, the way that we hold our bodies in a very specific way to each individual. This may also be how you recognize your best friend or family member from 30 to 40 feet away when you really strip down all those details and get at uh, what what is at the core of how we identify with one another on a very large scale or global level. Uh, this is what a story would be. Or anything else. I mean, as long as it's something that you start with that is concept-based and based on an importance for organizing the rest. Detail may not at this stage be a, a great way to start with gesture because it addresses the specific too soon. The next thing is after having establishing this, which is our our theme, that's another way to think more in terms of story, um, a theme to the figure, two and the rest that I write below um, are more about explaining it, but explaining it in a way that's uh, believable. So the second thing is the observance of weight and balance in the figure. This is incredibly important, that as figures we are machines that are in a constant state of compromise between weight and balance. Uh, and we'll look at a couple of examples for that. Um, just for example, to, to begin, think of what it is to walk or to run. Um, it's a very chaotic play of weight and balance. Uh, we have to throw ourselves out of balance to take a step, and then we catch it again. And then we have to throw ourselves out of balance again, and then we catch it again. So even the very basic idea of movement is a chaotic balancing act. Um, and what we want to put this in opposition to is um, contour. Because right? what we'd like to do, what I'd like to have you think about, is if you are uh, still thinking in terms of drawing contour at this stage, uh, that you maybe look at this with some new critical sensibilities and I really do ask if this is maybe the best way to realize the figure. And I think that um, I can use this example because it's how I learned to draw. So I'm not trying to be judgmental or critical. I'm just purely speaking here from experience. Uh, but when I really started to think about what it is I was doing and, and how it affected the viewer and the drawing, uh, I think that we'll find that none of the things that we consider truly realistic in the sense of uh, the analytical conditions of the figure apply here. Um, for example, weight and balance. 
uh, this guy is entirely stacked. Right? Everything is perfectly symmetrical. And this is uh, it's like a giant turd figure. Right? Everything here is perfectly balanced, which we are just not. But the tendency in the contour is that we do make these symmetrical line choices. But what we really have in the figure, and we'll do um, a profile view here, is more so that very, very dramatic system and play of balance. And so as we start to work, oops, sorry about that, as we start to work here through this explanation, what we're now looking at is the eight parts of the figure. So just to make sure you can follow my train of thought, um, as this is all the important stuff for getting the drawing up and off the ground, uh, we'll add a few more qualifying descriptive terms. So what we've started with again for a brief review is the idea that gesture is important and in our journey to abstract something to use in gesture, uh, again, some type of essence. We've looked at things that are very much specific to the figure, and now we're starting to look at the eight parts. Because these are the things that we will be describing um, in gesture. Right? These are the most important elements that we do have to make sure that we get across and communicate with. So this is our, if we made this even more specific, this will be our why. Why are we drawing the figure? This will be our what? What is it exactly that we're drawing? And what we're still working towards is our how, which is this. How are we going to draw the figure? So these are the, again, this is thematically how I'm going to run this course. Um, again, we have to know what it is we're looking at even if it's anatomy, but most importantly, we have to know how to draw it. Um, so I hope that the course can make some type of light bulb go off in between for you. Um, at the very least, maybe you get an idea of how to organize difficult subject matter into a palatable artistic process. Okay, sorry for that digression. We're back now at the eight parts of the figure where we've been talking about weight and balance. Uh, most important for weight and balance, and what we do really notice in the figure, is the idea that the profile view demonstrates that the figure is a natural balancing act. Uh, if we start to look here, what we'll notice is that the head, uh, as a form, is pushed out over the rib cage by the neck. So we have this uh, tilt. The neck is positioned in a way which throws that head out over and across the rib cage. Uh, because of that, so let's say we break that into a simple idea of a tilt, a form that's in tilt. Uh, what we'll notice next is that the rib cage leans back. And what this allows for is the accommodation of the volumes and their tilt above the neck and the head. Uh, as we move down and into the pelvis, this has a another counter position as the pelvis works in a different two-dimensional tilt than the ribcage above, neck, and head. Uh, so that also brings us to our first three of the eight parts. We have a head, ribcage, pelvis, um, two legs, Aren't you glad you took the class? You've learned that you have all of these parts and two arms, which we've left out here. Most important and key to what we're talking about here is the spine. That is really why we're seeing this kind of dramatic counter positioning in our major parts here, our major symmetrical areas of the body. Uh, this really nice, beautiful S curve. Um, the reason that the head is projected forward is because of the cervical section. So you have the cervical section first, of which there's seven, ending at the seventh cervical vertebrae. And we're going to leave the spine in very general terms for now. We have this change in direction at the thoracic, which is pushing the ribcage forward. So 
So that's going to start to look something more like this. And in the thoracic, we have 12 vertebrae. And then at the very bottom, this last line that led into the pelvis would be the inclusion of the spine, and that would be your lumbar, of which there's five. Really important form for understanding gesture. Um, I'm going to work always from the head through the spine to the weight bearing leg when we begin our process portion of today's lecture. Uh, so make sure that you, from any of you, really do your best to try to come to some kind of agreement with what's going on with the spine. It'll make a huge difference. Um, and also you can see that what's happening is that when we really start to look at what's going on in order to abstract something that's realistic or natural, uh, we're finding that it looks m less and less like what maybe we were, or me, what I was more inclined to do. So this idea of a gesture uh, is really going to allow us for a new level of realism. Okay. We've set up our tilts. We've given one example of how weight and balance work. Um, that's not the only one. If we look at the legs, in your legs you'll see that uh, the femur has somewhat of a bow that makes it a C curve and that the tibia and fibula give a counter curve. So in our legs we have an S. So we're a kind of chaotic system of tilt that's balanced on a very you know, spring-like femur and tibia and fibula. Um, great design. Now we can absorb weight, uh, we can run, we can move. A right? very dynamic design here. That's from the side. Uh, from the front, we can show another example of weight and balance. Uh, the balance here is one of hard and soft. So this is a hard form, primarily bone, primarily bone, giant mass of the rib cage. We have all of our ribs, true, false, and floating into the pelvis, bony landmark, which we'll talk about in the second week. Uh, and not to get too far into that, but they're all balanced between areas of muscle or fat. So in between the transitional areas, we'll have soft forms. Uh, and this is one way that you can always break down the transitional forms. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on um, with pinches or stretches. But just another concept or realization here of the figure as a balancing act. Um, design in this sense. Yeah. Something that you could definitely even show in line weight, hard versus soft, which we'll talk about as meaning um, sharp versus uh, flesh or bone versus flesh. So that's my description of that second really important concept of weight and balance. Uh, third one will be movement. And this isn't just posing the figure in a position that has movement. It's suggesting to the viewer in the way that the figure is drawn that there is a level of movement that should be involving them as they see the drawing. So now we're getting closer to this. Uh, what we've determined is that this needs to be engaging, number one, whatever the engagement is. Uh, number two, we have to have something that communicates a display and difference of weight and visual balance that also, number three, shows and showcases a sense of movement. Um, and what we're going to use to do that is gesture and the gesture curves, um, which are going to be asymmetrical lines. This is one of the best ways and historically consistent ways for showing the figure in an edited way that communicates uh, most everything that's important to it. It's also a way that has commonly been used in the popular arts to engage uh, an audience or to draw or design something with mass appeal. Um, so the asymmetrical lines uh, will begin inside, but you can see that when we do use them, and as we start to look more at our how here, the asymmetrical lines, I'll get rid of some of this, are going to be very much a repetition of the spine. 
So here's our asymmetrical lines. The type of lines that I'm going to be using in this class will be straight C and S curves.